Welcome, everybody. We are back for our second semifinal. It is officially time for this game to get underway. We have made nothing less than history, and we're about to make even more here, Karma. Yes, we are. We're going to find out who enters the grand finals of the first women's event in Rocket League land history. Stakara gets things started off from endpoint in their own half perk. And already, Genji, you're putting on some pressure as a dangerous ball goes in front. And Courtney lights it up early. Genji up what? Genji fans, I know you're out there. Be loud and be proud. Genji Mobile One Racing Black starting off strong here in game number one. Nothing short of what anybody expected for them. But end point, it's now, it's a, it's a very tiny game of catch up, but it is not impossible. Courtney trying to break into this half. Takara with the clear, being met with a redirect from Alanis all the way towards the net and saved by Bella. Bella, nice control there, able to find her team in the midfield, follows it up, but a beautiful save from Slumpy. Denied on the doorstep is Genji. I need to know why Slumpy chose Merc today. Do you think she, it gave her just a little bit more edge? Like, it would, she, in her brain, she's like, hey, this will make sure nothing gets past me. I did not realize what I was looking at because I was like, wait a minute, is someone really in a Merc right now? That's just an oversized clinic. <laughs> You're just, your eyes are a little off. I thought I, you know, wasn't all here, but no, nope, that really is a Merc. Uh, and I love the attitude that that brings. You know, it's like, yeah, it's not my standard car, but the bump comes out. The Merc could not withstand the bump and Bella tucks it in the far post left side. This is Kate. Gets rid of that big Merc hitbox. Get out of our way. <laughs> get, get out of here. Get out of here is what Genji is telling Enmoid so early on. Now, this is our second series of the day. If you're just now stopping in, it's a best of seven winner. Heads over to the grand finals and sends whoever is defeated home. And Genji are on their way. It's a long journey, just the beginning. But no he's way. starting off so strong. Courtney makes sure that Genji gets a third goal. And a big old goose egg stays on that board for Enmoid. And a slumpy is probably like, Bella, what are you doing there? Uh, what? <laughs> Ends up in her net. And Genji, everything going their way early. This is what you want when you're a confident team. You could hear the Genji players in their interviews. You saw Courtney dancing on stage. It's clear that they're confident. They love their team vibes, their environment. And when you come out hot like this, it's real tough for Endpoint to stop that momentum. Exactly, but they're gonna do their best. Takara doing her best to try and center that one towards the teammate. Nobody quite there. Courtney up next. She sees Kate. No connection gets made with this ball. And it was another incredible passing play showing, right? That's what Gen G does best. They work together. They communicate so highly that whatever they want to do, nine times out of ten, it's going to be accomplished. And I believe adding Kate to this roster has had a lot of stability um, to the Gen G play style. Kate is such a terrific third woman in the back, able to keep things that are dangerous at bay and allow Courtney and Bella to freely just attack the offensive side. I agree. <laughs> That's, you couldn't have said it any better. They, they really and truly, Gen G is such a remarkable roster. They have stability, they've got confidence. And speaking of confidence, Courtney coming out with a double tap for Gen G Mobile One Racing Black. Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful air dribble, double touch. Defenders not knowing what to do, that amount of control. Courtney showing why she's so feared in the women's leagues. She has that control and she has that individual play that can jump out at any moment just like that. And it is nothing but smiles for Genji. Even Bella, I'm just looking over at her player cam. She's playing while smiling nonstop. You can tell she is just having the best time. There she is in the net disrupting as Kate slots another one in. 5-0. Uh, right now, Endpoint are, are struggling on the defensive half. A lot of touches are getting out of their control and teammates aren't able to follow it up. And Gen G are just making a, making Endpoint pay every single time a ball is left in the open field there. All five times it has ended up in the back of their net. And now if you're Endpoint, 
with the remainder of this game, this is where I start talking to my teammates, Herc. What, what do we need to do to adjust this game? We're going to throw it away. It's game one. Let's talk about what we need to do to get ready for the next one. Well, maybe it was communicated that demos, you just got to take this team off of the field. That is your best chance of coming towards this net. Takara taking two touches to try and get around that defensive line from Genji. A shot from Takara up off the backboard. Alanis with the angle. Doesn't find her way in as Courtney keeps her out. Not once, but twice. Beautiful saves from Courtney. So shot rains in Alanis. Beautiful save as she tries to start to transition the other way. Kate there, Courtney off the ceiling, unable to make contact. And for now, endpoint survive. And that's really what it is. It, it's surviving at this point. The good thing is this is only game number one in a best of seven. There's a long way to go. We just watched a reverse sweep. There is so much Rocket League that is about to be played. But with a minute left, Genji wants it to go down in four. You can tell they're hungry. Alanis pops this one up. Kate sends it on home. 50 seconds left. I wonder if we'll see a car change out of Slumpy potentially next game. I don't know. Maybe the Merc is just that car for her. This is a ball. Kareen's into the middle. Alanis trying to go with the pinch. I like the idea. Unable to get the power that she needed. But endpoint able to stave off Gen G now for the last two minutes, three minutes or so, they've really stabilized. So heading into this next game, Herc, that's going to be a talking point. What were we doing defensively in the final minutes that was working for us? Exactly. Seeing if they can make change in game number two is going to be pretty much the most important thing Endpoint needs to work on, right? They, if they can't adapt, if they cannot figure out what went wrong in game number one, then this definitely could be a shutout. Oh, Alanis trying to sneak one in there for a confidence builder. Unable to get it, but Gen G, Mobile One Black coming out strong with the W. Courtney, is she going to jump on the desk or is she just waving <laughs> up and down? I just, I know she just wants everybody to yell as loud as possible. You, she can hear us. I know she wants to do her little dance shimmy thing soon. Look, it's nothing but smiles from Gen G, even when they're talking about whatever they need to do to improve. Because at the end of the day, even when you're at the top, you're never perfect. There's always something you can do better. And it, it's, a, it's a tough mindset to have and to understand, but Gen G, they do great by having it. Absolutely. And then on the other side for Endpoint, I think it starts with just getting out of your defensive half and, and getting some shots on target. They, they were pinned in their defensive half most of that first game. As you can tell, it's a five-goal difference there. But, you know, when, when you're outplayed that hard in game one, you don't want to get too into it. You don't want to try and force things too early. You have to keep in mind, this is a best of seven. Even if they go up two games, it's scary. But you can make the adjustments pretty easily. That's why there are seven of them. And for Gen G, it's just about keeping up that momentum right off of kickoff. Win that kickoff, dump it into that endpoint side, and just continue that pressure. Exactly. I think Gen G, realistically, they just got to continue to play their game. They know that they can do it. And we're going to see if they keep on doing it as we head on over into game number two in this best of seven. Bella already up in the air, being met with a challenge from Slumpy Alanis. Pass over to Takara. She wants to hold on to control. Not able to get past that Gen G defense. They're already setting themselves up for any attack that Endpoint tries to put on. So a shot comes in from Takara. There you go, Endpoint on the board early in game two. A slumpy off the back wall. Bella unable to make contact. It was a really tough bounce for her. And Takara all over it. Now Endpoint have to be feeling good early. That's what we were waiting for. We Endpoint knew. Realistically, the only way to disrupt Gen G or make them nervous or annoyed or anything, you gotta take them off the field. And if you can't bump them and if you got the opportunity to demo them, do it. Take them out, go score whatever, you know, opportunity open net you create. <laughs> and that's realistically, that's the best way to play against Gen G. They're so incredibly high rotational. It's, it, it's a hard sentence to put together, but they just play really, really well. That's all y'all need to know. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And especially when you can't keeping everything together back there, allowing our teammates to move around the field freely. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what you were trying to say. And, and they're just doing it so well. Kate's decision-making her to allow Bell and Courtney to just cycle as much as they do 
it, it, it's just really ties things together for them and allows that speed and creativity that Bella and Courtney have being teammates for so long to link up and create that offense as uh, she's just so stable in the back and, and Kate impresses me um, every time she takes the field. Same to me. I just love watching this team play together. They mesh incredibly well, but on the other end things, so does Endpoint. They have the absolute capability to, you know, find success. And they got the one goal lead. They know they need to hold on to it. You can't be risky. You can't yeah, be risky with not. the one goal lead. But that's risky as Gen G seemingly had a ball in the corner. But a nice challenge here from Alanis sets up her teammate beautifully. And Dakara, both goals for Endpoint. She's feeling that striker vibe, and she's paying off right now. Working together, taking the opponents off of the field is your best bet, and they're doing it so well. You saw Takara being cheeky with the, the challenge there with just one boost, a single boost <laughs> in her tank. Three minutes are left in this game, at number two. Endpoint holding on to a 2-0 lead as Gen G fight to push into the Endpoint half. And that is a rare thing to say, that they have to even fight to get in. Yeah, absolutely. Endpoint have totally changed up their play style. They're, they're trailing right now more of a Williams resolve style with that midfield control as Courtney almost able to find that redirect. Great speed to get up to it to start this Gen G offense. This ball's gonna find its way in the midfield. Courtney with a touch that pops it up in the ceiling. Kate, nice clear there. Looking for a follow up from Courtney. She finds her way on in. The 50 goes in. And Genji cut the lead in half. Unfortunate for Endpoint. Just a little bit of a miscommunication. Luckily, you got the two goal lead. You don't need to fret. But Genji, they'll take that happily. They've been struggling for offense this game. And sometimes, even though it's a miscommunication, total accident can get you jump started, but not for Takara. She's going off. She's got a hat trick, and she's got Endpoint up 3-1. She just had to make sure, you know, Merc and Fennec were set to the same setting. Make sure <laughs> her Fennec was secretly a Merc, so she could also break through. Endpoint, they're they're doing it. They're making Genji a little bit nervous, and I say that very loosely because if you look at Genji. They have been nothing but smiles, despite all of these goals coming in. They fist bump after each one. They still know that every, with every goal comes a mind reset. And that, I think, is what is kind of setting them apart right now, at least in the long game, right? Playing the long game is what is going to make you win. Exactly. Keep the attitudes up. Don't get too down after frustrating losses. Still plenty of time to come back here. The game is not over. Endpoint have been playing exceptionally well, but that two-goal lead can be very scary with limited time remaining. You don't want to get overconfident. You don't want to overcommit. Well, that was definitely not an overcommit. It was nothing but a threat. Courtney's going to keep this one in that end point half. Carries it over Slumpy and over the net. And a demo sends her all the way home. And that's what we were talking about, right? Demos, take them back. Send them there. Triple commit to make sure Takara's shot doesn't even get a chance to be on target. Can't let Takara shoot. She's three for three. She's got a hat trick. She's got all endpoint goals so far. As Courtney tries to start the offense with a transition, Kate getting her first shooting opportunity. Nicely placed, but man, the endpoint defense has went on. But you can't defend when you don't have a goalie. And Courtney tucks it in the open net. Keep your eyes on Kate here, deleting that goalie off the pitch. And if you're struggling to score and you get rid of the goalie, it's it, should, free. it should work. It's, it's free. <laughs> it's free at that point. Yeah. Takara didn't even think that she would have to worry about her teammate defending it until she realized, well, if they demoed her, that means I got to go back. And she couldn't turn around in time. But if you can't turn around in time to defend, just score one for yourself. End point. They are up by two again. Get the ball to Takara. She's got the hot shot right now. All four goals for end point. And Gen G here on kickoff. Can they muster some offense? Let's find out. Slumpy, collecting that boost. Up off the ceiling, challenged by Courtney. The one bounce towards the net, and the angle Woo! doesn't find its way in. The pinch on the goal line keeps this ball out. 
but the pressure doesn't stop there. There is it. There it is. It's Courtney up next with the challenge. Bella with one of her own. Slumping no connection it allows Kate the time to try and send this ball towards the net, but with 30 seconds left to go, Gen G is running out of time. Gen G has the right mindset. Try to get demos, try to break that defensive rotation that EU's known for. Slumpy using that Merc well, trying to get those demos. Bella, that's a tough read. Ends up finding it, and Kate there to clean up. 10 seconds are left before Endpoint can retie the series up. And I think that's going to be huge for morale headed into game number three. And Endpoint, I was never worried for them. When you watched the player cams in between the matches, you could see there was tons of communication. Coach was right there. He was up in the player's face. They were all listening. They were all talking about those adjustments. And even so, right now, that it didn't seem like they were distraught after game one. It, it didn't seem like it affected their mentality at all. No, it, it really, truly didn't. And I think that's the best thing that you can do for yourselves, right? If you let even just one loss you know, completely destroy your mentality, the, the rest of the series is gone. Yeah, especially on LAN, uh, and you're, if you're considered an underdog, you know, and you hear that all the time coming in, uh, Karma keeps calling us an underdog, like, <laughs> what's her problem? Put your headsets back on, girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was, when you come in and you lose game one like that, you can get kind of worried, but Endpoint showing why they have that EU mentality, <laughs> they don't get phased, uh, they just rely on, on their, their defensive half, the trust in their teammates, and Takara's shooting ability for all four goals. <laughs> Takara popping off was exactly what they needed, I think, to be able to gain some confidence heading into this next game. But that, I don't think, will be enough against Genji. You, Slumpy, I'm, I'm looking at her to really raise the bar. I know Alanis is more than capable, uh, capable excuse me, but I never really see Slumpy on the mark. So I'm a little nervous for her. I want to know what the, the thought behind the decision was. But I don't know. We're going to find out here if it was a worth it decision or not as we head into game number three. Kickoff going in favor of Gen G, Mobile One. And they've got all the pressure in their favor. And typically when you choose a big car like that, if I'm going Merc, it's to demo other people. Yep. Because I want to be as big and, and fat as I can. So <laughs> I hit as many cars as I can and get them out of my way. Maybe that's part of the thinking process. Whatever it is, it's working for Endpoint right now in game two. But so far, the last 30 seconds, Herc, it's been all Gen G off the kickoff. It absolutely has. This is one of the few times we've seen Endpoint find their way into the Gen G half. And it took a pinch of the sidewall to break in. And even at that, the transition happened not, e not even a mere 10 seconds later. Genji goes back. It's their turn on offense once again. Yeah, very back and forth series. No team really able to take full control of the offensive half yet. It felt like Genji was doing it a little Ooh. bit early on. And a tough read gives Courtney a shot. And she buries it. Puts Genji, mobile on black, up early. Kate with the pinch. And just the immediate push up from Courtney to make sure that this one could get placed in anywhere. She knew it was going to go low. She took the opportunity. It just became unsavable. And it was a tough read on the backboard. Yep. Shouldn't feel too bad about herself. Low boost in the back wall there. It's always going to be difficult. Here, Endpoint trying to work a team play out of defense. That's how you want to do it. Utilize your teammates, especially if you're low boost, to get out of that defensive half and kickstart your offense. Exactly. Full tank of boost, enough for somebody to try and challenge, but Bella is just faster. Kate's up next. She places it into the corner. Second touch might let this waterfall down. If Slumpy didn't have the backboard read, she leaves this one for Alanis, collects the boost. They're taking their time, but Genji, they give them no space. Now, Genji's challenges have been on point. It's going to take a dribble play, I think, from Endpoint. Similar to what we were seeing Misfits do yesterday. Allow Genji to come at you. Utilize their pace and aggression against them. And try and utilize those teammates to get out of that defensive half and create some offense. Ooh, that was tough. But nicely done by Alanis. She's been playing great so far this series as well. She really and truly has. Alanis reminds me very much of Kate. She's that very solid third player that you can always rely on to be there for you and defend or shoot whatever you need her for. She will make sure she is there. Slumpy pushing on up. This ball is going to go into the midfield. A bump, though, gives the opportunity to try and clear this into the Genji half. And it does. It goes backboard, but it's red and set. 
Ooh, Sluffy. <laughs> Happy confused there with the Merc <laughs> once again. Tough read from Bella. That spot has been really difficult for Gen G to defend. If you're an endpoint player, take note of that. Keep putting balls high off the backboard. Uh, they've been struggling. Yeah, they definitely have a little bit. Now, the good thing would be that this is a one goal game. Might turn into two here if somebody turns around. <laughs> you saw a lot of she was like, I will make sure my car turns around faster than yours and I will get that save and she did. And Alanis is gonna take a shot of her own now. Bella with a save. This ball goes up high, Courtney. Enough boost to get one more touch, but Takara's got the challenge. Now Alanis's composure right now, I keep looking at the cam. It gives me a lot of confidence, especially if I'm one of her teammates. She looks locked in, ready to go. Slumpy the, the fake and Takara ends up getting credit for the goal, but pay attention the slumpy here this is all slumpy confusing the last defender look at her go up ariel makes the defender think a touch is coming instead drops it right down and uh, we have a tie game if slumpy was like her twitter it would have been that fake <laughs> i think we've got a little bit of a pause here though we're gonna come on back here let me step back up on my box so i can be as tall as you again <laughs> yeah that's that's what we need we need this there you go, guys. I'm not a giant. Um, <laughs> She's not six foot seven, and I'm not four eleven. <laughs> <laughs> but we are um, having a great series go on. I think a tie game, 147 in game three, knotted up one each. Mm -hmm. With technical issue right now, we're working on that for you guys. But so far, who's been the standout player for you this series? Ooh, honestly, even given the way that the first game went, Takara. Mm. Takara popping off in this game has been absolutely incredible. And I know Courtney has had her shining moments. And honestly, the reason I picked Takara is because I expect that from Genji. My, they know my That's expectation true. for them is extremely high. If they do anything less than that, then I'm worried. But for Takara to be absolutely stepping up, making sure you know she gets the hat trick, then she goes fourth after Slumpy starts to step in. That's a standout player for me right now. Yeah, I think that's a great pick for me on Gen G. Um, obviously, I have to love the way Courtney's playing, but for Kate, I think, is playing a phenomenal job in back, keeping everything in check. I know I've mentioned it a bunch of times. It's because of how impressive it is. It's really difficult to be that player in the back who allows your teammates to go for whatever they want, whenever they feel like it. It's all about communication, and Gen G are just showing that so well. They've Bella and Courtney have been teammates for such a long time, and they've had such great success in the WCB, and now Kate coming in. I just think she might be a perfect fit for this roster, but Endpoint have something to say about it. They do. They, they want to challenge what Genji's bringing to the table. I think, I, I love, not I think, I know, I loved in the video when they said that they were just proud that they made it. That making it here was a feat and an accomplishment in and itself. It and it really and truly is. And if you come in aware you're an underdog, right? I know we keep using the word, but you come in aware you're an underdog. All you can do is give 100% and be happy. As long as you walk away knowing you did everything you can or could, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all you could ever hope for. Absolutely. And as we take a look at the player cams, everyone looks chilling. Maybe we're going to get ready soon as the, we get some confirmation here. And I love the setup that we have here on DreamHack. The lighting isn't too, too tough. You can get like a nice definition of the players. They all look good. Uh, oh, boy. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> all right. Well, it's almost time. Let us know. We want to hear you cheer for whichever team you are rooting for. So we're going to start out with Endpoint. If you're rooting for Endpoint here today, let us hear you in the crowd. We're waiting to see. Any Endpointers? Any Endpointers? I think they're all still in EU. Oh, we got some no, Endpointers. We got a couple Endpointers. All right. I, I think I know where this one's going to go. If you're rooting for Gen G, Mobile One, Racing Black, let us hear you. All right, we got a favorite in the building. I think we're in NA. <laughs> we got a report. We got a report. We have a favorite in the building. <laughs> This has been such an incredible day. Thank you yeah. all for being yeah. here. This, look at the crowd. It's look great. Look at them. Keep it going. I love the wrist flick that that guy's doing. <laughs> yeah, don't break it, bro. Chill out. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to jump into the camera right there. They're but. really happy, and I love that. This is <laughs> such it's an, it's a historic event, and I wouldn't want anything less. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Rocket.
Street Clash game number three in our other semifinal between Endpoint and Genji Mobile One Racing Black to find out who will meet Misfits Gaming in the grand finals. Absolutely. And Bella wants to get things started quick. Courtney, she's so dangerous off the sidewall. Tried that musty flick. I like the idea. Bella also keeping pressure. As Genji swarming in the midfield right now. Watch out. A demo came through, and that could open things up. Something with the clear. Alanis intercepting it as a pass. Maybe the double tap, triple tap, maybe Woo! for the angle. Doesn't find it, but you knew she wanted it. I would have lost my mind if Alana scored that. That was one of the most beautiful setups. She had it there, almost got to Kara. Double off the sidewall, can't find the net. But man, endpoint after this break, look real sharp. The mechanics are on, they're controlling the ball. This looks like a different endpoint than we saw in game one. It does, and the one thing I've always loved talking about is when there are technical difficulties, you get this unofficial break, this unofficial pause, and you can use it. Now, granted, if you're the person with the technical difficulties, maybe you can't be doing this, <laughs> but for everyone else, you can use it as a time to reset, kind of, you know, tweak up the game plan a little bit and see if there's something you can do better. And it definitely feels like M1 took the opportunity to kind of calm down, chill out a little bit against Gen G, but 17 seconds left to go. Courtney, she wants to try and start taking shots at this net as Alanis gets past 10 seconds to go. As the final 10 counts down, this is a huge game. Game three in this best of seven when things are even up. It's huge as a rare bounce comes across and Courtney puts it in the top right in the final seconds to steal game three. Courtney with the zero second goal. She did the shimmy. She was happy. Genji Mobile One have gone up by one in the series. That's not Misfits. That is Genji. Genji. There they go. Man. Let's go, boys. Let's get it. Oh my goodness, you can see it. They're so happy. <laughs> but at the same time, they're a little bit more locked in than I saw them in their first win. Yeah, absolutely. Genji are totally locked in. I think um, you know they come. They always bring that professionalism to their game and how they approach it how they execute it. Um, I, I don't know, I can't compliment Gen G enough. I, I think they're an extraordinary team putting on display, but on the other side, Endpoint, we're 10 seconds away from potentially being up 2-1 as well. You can't let this get to you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a best of seven, um, only three matches played. And if, you know, no offense to Endpoint, but if the, if the mechanical consistency was there, they could arguably be up you know, much easier than they could have been. And because uh, the chances are there for Endpoint. They're playing exceptionally well. Uh, they're utilizing their teammates really, really well up and down the field. And they have the solo playability. You saw Alanis almost had the triple touch there. Um, Takara, she's scoring everything she touches. So if we can just find that that contact, that more consistent scoring tank, Endpoint can be right back in this. It's definitely a mix of multiple things that need to be going down for Endpoint to kind of get into that groove. But it's like you said, they have the opportunity, you know, to be beyond successful. Like you said, going back to the setup for the triple tap if she wanted it. If she had just closed out or locked in, who knows what that might have found its way on into that net. But we've got game four underway. Genji are fighting to head to match point. And I say fighting lightly. This team is ready. They're locked and loaded. And it is one shot after the other. Look over at, I was trying to find Courtney. It's a little dark over there, but I think she's still smiling. <laughs> Genji up early as well as have the pressure, but Endpoint trying to answer. Slumpy, waiting for her to get going. She's a sleeping giant, and, and, and when she gets one, who knows? They could all start to fall. Is Bella open net opportunity? No. Goalie's there. Slumpy denies it, and Takara's trying to clear. Keeping it going is Alanis. Maybe a pass over to herself. Courtney waiting. Longest and strongest clear in the game. And a bump. Actually allows Endmoin to try and take control for a second, but it's going to be short-lived as Bella breaks on in, takes control, pass over to Courtney, and the slot is on target. Gen G had found the one-goal lead. Yeah, the trust is there. Bella not allowing Alanis to follow that ball and give Kate that space to find Courtney in the middle. And that's trust right there when you're passing to that last defender in line. If that gets cut out, you're giving up an open net. So that takes a lot of trust. and. Courtney burying the opportunity. 
Sophie taking a shot of her own. Bella with the save. She carries this one up into the air. She sees Kate. She had enough boost to actually get down and touch that. She just couldn't get her car in the positioning she wanted it to. Three minutes and 30 seconds. And Genji, if there's one thing I know they can do, it's hold on to a one goal lead for the sake of heading to match point. Absolutely, Genji is not gonna allow anything free. There hasn't been much physicality out of the endpoint side. We haven't really seen many demo attempts, not as many backline runs as we saw out of the Williams Resolve match earlier in that EU play style as Alanis navigates that tough situation beautifully and keeps it to a one goal game. Three minutes left, shot not on target, but that was a scary one. All you gotta do is make sure everything you put is on target because you're not gonna get many opportunities against Gen G. And when you do have them, you gotta capitalize on them. Otherwise, they go wayside and it's really difficult to find more. Absolutely. It's, oh, sloppy off the crossbar. Keep that in mind if Gen G are able to make a comeback here. Slumpy once again utilizing that Merc hitbox really nice, slamming that one down the field. There's Alana, she's in a tough spot. She's gonna have to try and control as Bella comes in from the midfield on a tough read once again in the backfield and slots it home. Gen G utilizing that midfield tremendously well right now. Oh, you just know that last defender was not expecting it. I think she wanted one more touch and wasn't expecting a little bit of a fake and allow it. But that's just a testament to how strong the Gen G communication is. They are able to talk quick enough to say, hey, I'm gonna leave this for you. You go, I'm gonna fake the shot and let's confuse them and see what happens. And it works every single time. And I, I, maybe not every single time because that would be near impossible. But in the Gen G world, it's basically every single time. Bella, not enough boost to make contact with this ball. Courtney is up next. Nobody there to defend it. It's Takara racing back to make sure this ball doesn't even go near that net. And if I'm endpoint from now on, I'm not allowing any passes towards that middle of the field if I can help it. Try keep that in the back of your mind when you're defending because both of Gen G Mobile One's plays have come off of those midfield passes as a ball across the front of the net. Can endpoint find it? They can and Slumpy is going to have to try and find her teammate for more offense. Just under 90 seconds to go. Genji, they want match point. They want to continue to feel confident because they are confident. Slumpy pops this one up in the air. And I think this is almost very reminiscent of our last series that we saw, where where when M point is down, right, realistically, you would need to keep that ball a lot closer to yourself to not allow Genji the space to challenge you. And I feel like what's happening is M point is kind of just throwing themselves at this ball right now in hopes of getting a clear that's long enough to follow up. And it's it's not playing in their favor. Yeah, it's really difficult, especially when you're losing, to have the composure in the environment we're in to just slow the play down, trust yourself to be able to dribble that ball out. Uh, it can be anxiety relieving to just jump jump in the air. It feels like you're doing something, but if you take the control of the ball as it comes raining down, I thought maybe a third goal there. And, and try and dribble your way out of defense, but when Gen G are going this fast, her, it's real difficult to stop. He said, I thought that was gonna be the third goal, and immediately I saw Courtney up and I was like, well, there it is. Gen G, Mobile One, find the third goal for themselves. One more would be a nail in all four corners of a coffin. 27 seconds left before Gen G can head over to match point. Takara's up in the air. Maybe a reset could get help inch this ball towards that Gen G net, but it still, unfortunately, just wouldn't be enough as Gen G, like I said, that is a monster house to go up against. Yeah, they're, they're playing really, really well right now. And you can see it, the ball is finding them. And when you're playing a series and the ball is going to you for open nets, or finding teammates for open nets off of 50s or challenges, it just showcases how well your positioning is. Uh, if you have those players in the right positions to follow up on those offensive opportunities, like Gen G Mobile and Black was doing, all things are clicking. And Herc, for me, I know we talked about it during the game, but for Endpoint, it's an easy adjustment after that one. Don't allow anything to go towards the middle uncontested because that was three uncontested mid passes and three goals for Genji. Exactly. And it is at the end of the day, 
there's only three people that can decide if that change is going to happen, and it is endpoint. It is up to them to see if they are able, you know, to adapt quick enough to Gen G, or if they are aware that really you just got to give it 100%, see what happens, and let it happen. And it's easier said than done. It's like, yeah. oh, just stop the mid pass. Well, there's a lot of things that go into that, of course. You know, the endpoint probably is struggling in the boost department because we know how solid Gen G's rotations can be. And, and when you're playing up against a team like that, it's not as easy as just, oh, we're just going to sit in the midfield. It, it's very, very difficult, and it re requires all three players to all be on the same page, which endpoint are totally capable of doing, and I expect them to do so in the next one. I do too. I think that we are about to see some changes come out from endpoint. I think they are going to be able to do it. I don't know about reverse sweeping. I don't know how confident I am. I think Gen G, again, they are, you know, forever a top two team in North America. It's been that way since they've entered the scene. It is too, it, it feels like it is almost too much to go up against them, but we're going to see if the underdogs endpoint CEXUV can do what feels like the impossible as Alanis puts a shot on net and Kate sends it back. And the journey to reverse sweeping Gen G Marvel 1 has begun. This is a great start for Endpoint. As the ball gets towards the middle there, that's what you want to see. Alana's unable to tuck it in, but that starts, kick starts the offense, and now the cycles come in. Great play from Bella to allow Courtney to follow it up, but there's no Genji player there, and now Alana starts the transition out. Slumpy, leaving this one for Takara to take a shot. This one goes towards that crossbar. Slow follow up there from Alanis. Maybe a waterfall down as Kate has the backboard cover. She puts it into the midfield. Small touch to let Takara keep the challenge going, but everything is constantly being met, and the shots are high. They need to be a little bit more on target if you want to actually capitalize on this opportunity you have at being able to take this many shots onto Genji's net. And it's pretty clear from Genji's play style, they are a fast-paced team, and they want to make you match that pace. I want to see Endpoint try and slow things down, utilize that pace against Genji. Try and make them slow the game down and play at their pace instead. But right now, Genji are just zipping around, especially on the offensive half. As a shot comes in, and Courtney beats the Endpoint player to the ball and puts her team up one. Oh, man, Sumpy's touch. It unfortunately just set her up for such a great shot and Gen G won't let anything you know go unused and by anything unused I'm talking opportunities if they see that there is the the possibility to put a, that ball towards that net they will do it and it's so difficult when you're a team who uh, can't immediately match pace not that endpoint can't match pace it's more about the adjustments and, and what Genji is forcing you to play with and also play at speed it's just so difficult to adjust but Endpoint can do it. They just got to get the control a little bit down and make sure they finish their chances. I absolutely agree, Alanis. Nice save there, making sure this one doesn't go in. She double touches to constantly carry this ball all the way to the other side. Slumpy up next on the rotation to take a shot. Kate meeting her up in the air as this ball falls into the corner. Courtney challenges, wins the 50. It's going to be Slumpy who tries to keep this ball in that midfield. And it's short-lived as Genji breaks on it. The car. She's had the hot hand lately, fakes past one, but those Gen G midfield challenges are on point, Hurt, and it is just stuck in the end point half right now. Kate taking her time. Courtney with a shot. Takara keeping it out. As we approach the halfway point of game five, Genji sits on match point. This is everything to them. They want to claim a spot in the grand finals and one or two more goals could absolutely secure it with the amount of insane defense that they have been playing that endpoint they can't break past them so at this point go make a couple more shots of your own and claim this game they're looking so dominant through that midfield and it of course starts with their speed they're on top of every ball every free opportunity genji is there they're not missing a step the rotations are on and maybe he's turned towards that physical game, throw the bumps in, start to mess up that Genji rotation, because right now they're just in full force. They're not letting go of that ball. They're not giving up any space, and it's making it real tough on everyone. It really and truly is. Now, the good thing is it's only a one-goal lead right now. It leaves, it leaves everything open to tie things up for endpoint. If they can find something of their own, oh, no follow-up to the backboard touch there. The right idea, though. That double touch was there. The pass was great. 
It's tough to get those in, but just the fact that the opportunity was there should give them confidence for the last minute 30 or so. It really should. Takara, pass over to... Oh my gosh, even the passing plays, when they look so incredibly strong, like that should be there. Somehow Genji is just everywhere all at once. They're reading those passing lanes. Kara trying to find a bump. Alan has almost had the dunk. Signs of life for Endpoint here as the clock ticks down. When do you send the house? Your tournament life on the line. One minute remaining. Genji looking at moving on to the grand finals if this score holds. 45 seconds before Genji Mobile One Racing Black is on their way to continuing to make history, not only for themselves, but for the scene. And to give us the matchup I think people have wanted for many, many years. So Leah's Bella, beautiful carry down the field. Sakara tries to break it up a bit. And in transition, once again, met by a Genji player. And that pass, not allowed to happen. Genji fans, there's 10 seconds left to go. Cheer on your team. Endpoint, they've got one more opportunity to formulate a play. And Bella's going to waste their time and carry this one for a zero-second goal to claim their spot in the grand finals of Rocket Clash. Yeah, Gen G are going to be moving on to the grand finals. Congratulations to them.